So you can announce the parameters of the commission. What do you want this to be? We're looking at uh, the impacts of COVID-19 uh, on our, our residents in long-term care and understanding the issues surrounding uh, what has transpired in long-term care under the, the COVID pandemic. What, um, okay, and this comes from Christina um, from CP24. What would the role of the, uh, what would the role of the opposition be in this, in this independent commission? Well, this is a nonpartisan independent commission. Uh, and uh, the most important part uh, of this is that the public will be involved. The public will be involved in hearings, deputations, they'll have an opportunity to have input. Uh, and I, I think also to recognize that we're taking action. We're not waiting. We're the first province that is coming forward and going to have uh, a commission uh, involving the public. And we want to make sure that long-term care, the issues in long-term care are addressed. Uh, and this is something that we believe as a government is a priority. It has to be. And uh, we need to address the questions that Ontarians have. Starting in September, is there an end time that you expect to be? The scope will be defined and the details will be defined leading up to September when it's fully announced. And uh, I, I want to make sure that we are transparent. Ontarians deserve answers to their questions. Uh, this is a, a global pandemic that has inflicted uh, tremendous tragedy on our long-term care homes, many of them, and we need to get to the bottom of that. Sabrina from Nanji from um, Queen's Park today. Um, the independent commission into long-term care begins soon. Does the government expect the coronavirus to be uh, subsided by then? And then the commission well, the modeling shows that it is subsiding. But it's an unknown virus. The science and the evidence surrounding COVID-19 and how it spreads and, and uh, how it may affect our communities is still to be seen. Uh, but despite that, we need to have answers to questions surrounding what has transpired on, with COVID-19 in our long-term care homes. And our government is committed to being transparent about that. And she also asked, uh, can you confirm a member of the armed forces was sent into a long-term care home has tested uh, positive? and at what home and what additional members or measures are being taken, if any, to protect the soldiers that are going into those homes? Well, every measure is being taken and the directives come from the Chief Medical Officer of Health in terms of what needs to be done to keep our residents and staff safe. Um, the Canadian Armed Forces, uh, there were five positive um, Armed Forces members. I believe four were from Quebec and one was from Ontario, but that is the, the limit of, of what I know the details in terms of uh, homes. Okay, and this is from Karen Howlett, vote mail. Um, will the independent commission examine how Ford's government handled the crisis in long-term care homes during the pandemic? And she also asked, does the government plan to permanently ban staff in long-term care homes from working in more than one home in the future? Well, the, um, the one workplace per long-term care worker was brought in as a directive from the Chief Medical Officer of Health. It was obviously necessary and we took action uh, on that front, even though it had been strongly recommended before that and many homes were doing it regardless. Uh, but that is something that will have to be considered going forward. Staffing has been in a crisis leading up to this pandemic and for many years before that. Uh, we have an expert panel for staffing to inform us uh, for, uh, about a comprehensive strategy and that's something that we'll have to take into consideration. Will the government, and this comes from uh, David Hunt, um, will the government commit to releasing a full contents of the commissions of the inquiry to the public? Will the government commit to releasing the full contents of the commission of inquiry to the public? We're committed to a public report. So a report from this commission uh, on its findings will be made public. Is the government willing to make its responses to the pandemic when it comes to long-term care homes part of the parameters of the government's inquiry? Well, the scope uh, will have to be defined over the summer, but obviously we want to be transparent. So that would make sense to understand uh, the impact of COVID-19 on our long-term care homes and how uh, various actions would have uh, made a difference or not. But that is something that will be determined. Okay, and this is a combination of a bunch of questions from Brian Lilly and Mike Crawley. There's a huge difference between a commission and an inquiry. When you have a public inquiry, it's a judicial um, structure all by itself. 
independent of any government partisan. So when we look in the history, we look at SARS inquiry, which gave us a lot of the guidelines that we're using today. We look at the SARS inquiry, or sorry, the inquiry into Iqawash, where we revealed a lot more than the commission was doing. We look at Washington as also an inquiry. People died in all of those examples. Why not an inquiry into this that takes it out of the partisanship of the government? Well, first of all, it is an independent commission, and it is nonpartisan. And under the Public Inquiries Act, there are both public inquiries and commissions. They both have measures that make them public. And we've committed to being transparent in this process, to find answers to questions that Ontarians have, to providing a public report at the end, and making sure that there's public input, public hearings. And so in some ways, we're arguing about semantics when we really need to be getting into action. And we can't afford to wait longer. Public inquiries can take years. We just finished one with Justice Scalise that was started in 2017, didn't finish until 2019. And our government, our Ministry of Long-Term Care, has been working on those recommendations. But we can't afford to waste years. We need action now to address the shortcomings in long-term care and get people the care that they need. But inquiries are so much more successful. You look into SARS, Washington, there's been many of them, the Gepper Wash, these are all significant. But then when you look into commissions, you get Orange, which wouldn't have been available if it wasn't for a minority government. And that was, you criticized, your government criticized that of the Liberal Standing Commission. Public inquiries and an independent commission will both shed light on what's happened on COVID-19. We need a sense of urgency here, and the speed of a commission will better suit what we need to do to transform long-term care. People are waiting. Our wait lists are growing. People's lives depend on us getting the answers as soon as possible. We cannot afford to wait years. So speed is of the essence here, and it is a public process. The public will be involved, and our government is committed to transparency. So how can you make sure and tell people that the focus of this commission is going to be as wide as possible and connect things that other commissions have not paid, the scope is so small that they didn't get to the source of the problem. And we look at only Orange, which was a big boondoggle, and it was shelved because of the minority government. Well, I think the issues in long-term care have been laid bare. And there's no putting anything under the rug here. There's no spin. We need to be transparent. Our government is committed, the first ministry of long-term care ever in Canada. And now we have a commitment to be transparent about issues that are clear. This is something that has to be public, and that's exactly what we're doing with this commission, nonpartisan, independent commission that will include the public. It will have public input. It will have public hearings, and it will have a public report. And it's absolutely critical that we get to work immediately and not waste more years. We are so far behind where we ought to be. And our government has hit the ground running with a new ministry, understanding the imperative in terms of timing. And COVID-19 has made that even more so. Randy Hillier, a longtime member of the parliament here, said it's basically going to be a commission that's going to be smoke and mirrors. What do you have to say to him? There can be no smoke and mirrors. I think we've seen the shortcomings in long-term care from a capacity issue, from a staffing issue, and we were addressing those, and then COVID-19 hit. And COVID-19 hit, took a system that was strained, as Justice Scalise said from the wet law for public inquiry, and has really caused damage, and it's broken now. The Premier has said that as well. So there's no point in having smoke and mirrors. We need to be transparent. We need the answers to the questions that the public has. This will be public. We will have a public report. We will have a public process, and we'll have a meaningful scope. Ontarians deserve no less. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.